To be a successful actor these days, you must create your own content. Today, we're going to talk about how to get inspired and how to get started. Acting Class Weekly with legendary character actor Sean Whelan. Lessons, tips, and insight into the craft and business of acting from a man who's been directed by the likes of Spielberg, Eastwood, Tim Burton, Ang Lee, Michael Bay, Wes Craven, Tom Hanks, and many more of Hollywood's A-List. He is 30 years an actor and your professor, Sean Whelan. Roxy, let's get the elephant out of the room and let's talk about why the blue jacket this week. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The blue French jacket is all about, it's more creative and it's flashy and uh, it's a little exciting and uh, I'm excited today because I have one of my lifelong best friends as our guest today. And I feel since we're talking creative, it was apropos for the French blue jacket today. Are you with me on this? I can be. You wow. <laughs> if you would like, Sean, I'll be with you. It's better You're than being against you. Very political. <laughs> that is very political. Well, we're going to talk today about creating your own content, how to get started, and I brought in my friend Doug Van Beber because he he is also my writing yeah. partner for our, our project that we're going to talk about at the end. Little little teaser for the end. We're going to talk about a project that Doug created. Had me get on board a couple incarnations and now it is moving forward into bigger pastures is that a thing yeah. greener yeah. greener pastures yeah, yeah, bigger. Bigger. bigger pastures bigger is a phrase greener. oh i didn't know that bigger is a lot more mowing <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it is you need more work <laughs> well if it's brown you could just burn it Mm -hmm. Burning pastures. <laughs> <laughs> but as always, we have Miss Phenomenal, Roxy Stryer. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mr. Funtabulous is in the booth, Jeff Graham. Very excited. I got to say, thematically, another great show, obviously for actors, but I'm guessing for writers and directors as well. So let's get into it, guys. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, my friend, Doug Van Bubber, who I already mentioned, who doesn't have a really fun name. <laughs> um, yes, he does. Just what? his name in general. Van Beber is fun? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Like, you better not shout. You oh, better my God. Not You're cry. so Jewish. You're be so... Better you not be better cry. not cry. You better... I'm telling be you why. Stop. It's I went in and uh, was going in to help somebody with a project once, and they gave me a name tag, and they messed up my name, and they had me as Van Douglas. And I thought... <laughs> wow. That's I should have been... That should have been my should, stage that name. That should have been your stage name. <laughs> Pretty good. Van Douglas. <laughs> well, before we get into creating your own content, of course, as always, we're going to get into my week. Roxy, ready? Oh, one, uh, born ready. One, two, three. Sean's week. Ooh. Mm -hmm. And He's Jeff cool. coming in. Right on fire. To, yeah. That's our... Really that's our, it recently. Do you like it? I like that. Yeah. I like that. It's a little, little don't, straight. Don't feel like uh, he did like it, but it's okay. <laughs> Acting. All I know uh, this week is um, I am scrambling to put on a sketch show. I put on this uh, same kind of incarnation of the sketch show that I've mentioned earlier podcast a few weeks ago. I figured, oh, I'm just kind of going to polish some things off and I'm going to, you know, put it up again. And uh, my good friend Doug Van Beber last week... Uh, he was like, oh, I'm just working on my show. And I was like, well, what's the problem? And he said, well, you're still relaunching a show. And I went, oh, I'm good. And he was right. I'm scrambling. <laughs> it, it's a very frantic feeling when you're scrambling. Yeah, like when that. you're scrambling to like, well, uh, you know, uh, I didn't think it through, which was when I put on the sketch show originally. Now, for listeners, these uh, is my class of students, and I'm directing it. Uh, but in directing and producing it, what I didn't realize is it's part of a one-act festival, three weeks at Playhouse West. And before, I had some Playhouse students to help out with the uh, stage crew, um, stage manager. Well, because it's a whole school-wide festival, I lost all those people because they're all so busy. So that's what's kind of so making what it do? tougher. Um, we scrambled to find two people. I have my assistant, Aaron, coming in for this. Like, it's literally piecemeal. And you know, Doug gave me the idea: use your actors. You know, use them when they when they have or when they have downtime. They've changed. You know, and they've got a couple sketches. They can put bring out a chair or something like that. Doug's uh, has a, a block of uh, production 
one act plays that he does in his class that he teaches and uh he said he just had some people go last and had them be the stage group i mean yeah all of our actors are just moving around furniture and <clears throat> pulling curtains and doing whatever they need to do in fact i don't even have a stage manager or stage hand wow uh well my thing is i only have five people running a whole sketch show so i don't have a lot of wiggle room but so that's the main thing i'm doing this week I started looping today again on fresh off the boat which was really great um, that was very nice. And on a tougher note, I have a, a student that I really like working with who um, lost his lost his agent. And I what uh, happened? Uh, they just you know felt that they they ran its course. And he was a little distraught. And I said to him, that's why I kind of inspired this show. He's really working hard on his acting and really getting good. But I said, you know, how much, how many projects do you have? How many shows are you in? How many shorts have you written? How many, you know, and he said none. And I said, that's what this week's session is going to be about. We're going to sit down and nuts and bolts and figure out what kind of class you can get in where you're seen. I remember Jenna Fisher's book. The one thing she said is be able to be seen. Be seen. Be seen in plays. Be seen in shorts. Be seen. Like, put yourself out there. So... Instead of letting him get down, uh, we're strategizing this week to really place him in a better position to take control. And I talked about this with, I'm going back to Memphis, uh, people in Memphis. I'm going to be doing a workshop there on October 19th. But the theme of that one is, what's your 90%? Because an agent only takes 10. You're the 90%, and what are you doing? So, uh, but before we get deeper into that, so, oh, let me, this is a new thing that Jeff said is a good idea and I, I agree with them so if it's a little Smooth clunky shot. yeah super clunky super <laughs> clunky this is a new transition that we're it's a working new transition. on and it was out. just and it was so <laughs> it was so smooth but we're going to talk about you know Doug's history with this how he is able to create stuff even with a full time job that is entertainment related but not necessarily content uh, creating and well kind of it's reality but um, and then he's going to talk about story basic story structure in a couple weeks it's October 2nd uh, I'm going to have two independent people uh, friends of mine Jason to uh, Jason Trost and to Wickham husband and wife who do a lot of independence they're going to talk about nuts and bolts getting money and stuff like that but today we're going to talk about the inspiration so we call that a tease we folks. call that a tease <laughs> Nailed it, Sean. and then I said the, you know Doug and my project that uh, well it's actually Doug's project he's actually started 20 years ago is getting traction with uh, hopefully n uh, a television I don't know what a television project yeah, yeah television project recently and we'll tell that history too so that's my tease how did I do Mr. Funtabulous you know you did great I gotta say <laughs> I'm especially excited for all the topics but to hear Doug dive into story structure and now I'm on the edge of my seat the whole show wow <laughs> that's that a really lot of pressure yeah yeah you know they say like you want the audience to get excited but you don't want them to know really what you're doing well, right. we always want you to know exactly <laughs> what we're doing yes mm -hmm. so Roxy's gonna talk to us about after buzz and why you're so excited to listen today and all of our shows. absolutely guys we bring all this content to you for free and all the time you guys are asking us what can you do to give back well here's what would be really helpful for us first of all that amazing music thank you so we much Jeff. but rate comment subscribe so why does it matter if they rate comment and subscribe when you comment we know what it is you guys want us to talk about I will be reading a comment we got on iTunes this week in nice. a little bit because we love hearing that you guys want to hear more more about reels or resumes or improv classes or how to create your own content this is all coming from your suggestions and your questions so comments are a great way to do that also rating and subscribing boosts us in the views so actually more people can find us if you are rating and subscribing then some kind of algorithm math you know not our strong suit but we go up on YouTube and iTunes and everywhere we are in a way that makes it so other people can join this community and conversation which will keep this show around for as long as possible 
possible. So we really appreciate you guys doing that. Going to the iTunes review that we got this week, where we got, of course, Sean, five stars, nice. which we love to hear. This was coming from Hortaman. Hortaman. Okay. Sure, why not? He titles it Acting Class Review with Sean! Exclamation point. So he's excited <laughs> off the bat. Got it. All he says, sweet and simple, best podcast to help acting skills hands down. Nice. Wow. Another exclamation point. So we really appreciate it. We read your comments all the time and we actually give a shout out to one or two on air every week. So if you want your comment read on air, make sure you're leaving that on YouTube or on iTunes. Yeah, and we, uh, I just got another new student from a mom who is getting her kids into it. Uh, and they, from Ohio, driving to California to move out here to start the two teenage girls career. She listened to our whole podcast. Wow. Yeah, the one on ki- in child acting? Uh, yeah, they're right doing child acting and now she had a dream to do it so we're gonna i'm gonna start coaching her that's great so but that's all so the show works so dive in you know dive in rate comment subscribe so let's give a little bit of history of doug and i doug and i have known each other shoot 37 37 36 it was 1983 1983 yeah very first day of college (laughs) very first day of college that's when we met at ucla uh, my sophomore year, Doug's freshman year, uh, we became friends. We were roommates for several years. Then we didn't live together for my junior senior or my senior year. Then afterwards, we lived together for four years or five. Four or uh, five. I think four years. Four yeah. years after that, and then was uh, that the place that you live with like five other guys? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Because I did a show about living uh, lean when you're uh, getting started. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That some of the stories that. probably didn't make it on the air, but <laughs> yeah, some, some of the good ones. Did. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, Doug and Doug was part of that crazy four where the air mattress that deflated every night. <laughs> so that was good times. Uh, good times. But you know what? Honestly, amazing times. So fun. It yeah. was great. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and uh, but then you know I got into acting. Uh, Doug started doing some acting work, but then got more into writing. And then he got into reality producing and writing for reality shows. So he had a full time job. Sean, I'm sure people at home are wondering what does writing for reality mean. Okay, go for it. That's a very good question. Um, a lot of times, if you see things like uh, Dateline or a red uh, carpet, you did red carpet. I would write for a host. I wrote. I did Life in the Red Carpet for E, for the Academy Awards, the uh, Emmy Awards. Got it. But a lot of times what it is is that uh, that voiceover where you hear, um, then on September 9th, Joe walked in and found, to his yeah, horror, yeah, his yeah. wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> poor yeah. Joe. Yeah. Yeah. Well, poor Joe. Joe's really had a hard yeah. life. <laughs> My favorite reality story of Doug's was he said one morning he woke up <laughs> and turned on his TV. He was just tired, and it was this bogus like celebrity bikini thing, and they were just saying all these catty remarks about, you know, wh- why is uh, why does he think he looks great in that Speedo? I think he should speed out of that beach, or, you know, just crazy <laughs> stuff like that. And he's like, who wrote this crappy dialogue? And then 10 <laughs> minutes later, he goes, oh, crap, it was me about five years ago. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, I, was, I was like, why does this show seem so familiar? Oh, I wrote it. <laughs> That's really funny. Uh, so, so uh, but... A f- uh, what ten years ago you started doing the uh, started to do shorts and well first you did sketch shows so I want to just get into that first. What made you want to perform write and perform sketch shows? Well, I mean, look like so many other actors out there who are starting out. I didn't know anybody. I didn't have an agent. You right. know, I when I did you know those few months that I did have an agent, I'd go into an audition. I looked like every blonde haired, blue eyed guy out there. Yeah. And I just started getting frustrated. And it turned out that I felt like I had a sense of humor and I could write. So I thought, well, you know what? If I write something, I can put myself in it. I don't have to wait for a yeah. agent or I right. have to wait for a casting director. I can just start putting up my own stuff, which is exactly what I started doing. So the dream was to be an actor and all of these other things were how to make that dream happen? That's exactly what it was. The writing, the producing were all sort of side side gigs you know, yeah, that, that yeah. ended up happening just because I was trying to facilitate the acting work. Right, right. And and listen, this I've said this to you guys a million times. You have to know yourself as an actor, right? And who knows yourself better than yourself? So that's why it's really great to write for yourself. Just like 
you know, Roxy and I were talking about crust that I'm doing. I wrote that for myself because no one's going to put me in a lead, and this has a romantic interest, and I don't get many of those. So, yeah, and the uh, that's role is obviously perfect for you too. Though. Yeah, exactly, because yeah. I set it up for myself. So that's a really good way. So then, how did you you got some friends together? Yeah, or? I mean, uh, you know, one of the one of the important things that I think is I think try and create a community. Um, and it's funny. You can find the community in your acting class. You can find it in restaurants. Yeah. I met a lot of wonderful people who I'm still really good friends with in restaurants. And we all just had the same ideas and got together and said, you know, let's put on a show. Let's Meaning he was waiting tables. Waiting so tables. Yeah, just waiting. Not just going up to the no. tables. You <laughs> want to be part <laughs> not of my walk, community. Not just walking up to the random person in the restaurant <laughs> saying, hey, would you like to do a show with me? <laughs> Here's some extra butter. And. <laughs> and could you read the script I just read? <laughs> <laughs> oh, those guys are out there. That's for sure. Uh, yeah, so that's what we're saying. E even in your side gig, you'll be surprised, especially if we talked about living lean and mean and having those jobs. Most of those kind of jobs that we profess to have were uh, ones that a lot of actors do. So you'll meet other actors. So probably more likely that you can meet them at a restaurant or your day job if you're living in a, a major city that has uh, like a, a lot of a, actors. A New York, a Los Angeles, yeah. Atlanta or somewhere because mm -hmm. otherwise acting class probably is the best and closest way to meet people. Right. Like that. Yes. Right. And we've talked about this at your college, your university or things like that. If you do a short film for a university project or a film school, get to know actors. I listen to my networking podcast, you know, get to know them and then start to build your community, people that you really like. One was Molly, right? Mm -hmm. Molly and Jeffrey, they're what both in our about? play. Oh. They're both people that were in our play, but Doug's collaborated with Molly for years. For 20 Molly's an actress. Molly was, Molly's an actress yeah, writer. Yeah, yeah. Molly's an actress writer. And we started, when I started doing comedy shows, she was the one who I did them with. It was the Doug and Molly show. Uh, yeah. And a lot of the stuff, Psyche which we'll talk about in a little yeah. came out of that collaboration. Yeah, yeah. So uh, if you had to give a tip and say, okay, I want to do a sketch show, what should I do? Number one, get the community, then what? Well, you know, putting on your own stuff, I, I hear this a lot that people say, you know, I don't know how to do it, which is, you know, I, I get that. It's it, You do have to figure out how do you find a, how do you find the space, how do you find the material, and it's kind of like putting on a party. Like right. You just you find a theater. You get together with people. You start if you want to write stuff. You start writing it. Um, right. You get together times to rehearse. Get and together time. spitball the ideas of your sketches. Exactly. Yeah. And then yeah. you know. And then you just you pick a date and you put it up. I mean, honestly, it is very similar to throwing a party, uh, uh, like a catered party or yeah. one where you would have a venue. Yeah. An yeah. Event. yeah an, an event. event. An event. An yes. event. And you figure it out. I mean, a lot of what I did was just sort of learning on the job right because well, there's you, a lot of stuff that goes along with it listen you call your local theaters you get some prices what fits in your range um, mm -hmm. then once you get that done you get that date down then you get your friends in there and you know block off rehearsal times get the rehearsal times going and you say okay we're gonna write these many sketches by this time and Probably you would have to pick. Now, did you direct you and Molly? Were you co-directed? How did you do that? We we actually had a director. Okay. Um, okay. And then there was a couple times that we did shows and we just sort of directed ourselves. Okay. We were just sort of playing around. But then there were things that was good to have a director there to have the eye for the entire show. And how did you find that person? Um, you know what? It was the same thing of like finding the community. Um, right. We actually found the first time around we found an actor who just wanted to direct. He wanted okay. a shot at directing. Okay. And we said, okay, do you want to, here's our stuff. Do you want to direct us? And we just sort of put our trust in him. Okay. Okay. But again, uh, you know, again, it's like finding the people who are all sort of looking to do the same things that you're doing. Yeah. So, guys, listen, please. I'm going to say this again, and I know I'm repeating myself. The networking podcast on networking is so important. Everything changed. I mean, look at all the stuff you and I are doing now, Roxy. Yeah, crazy. Because I went up at a coffee bean and tea leaf and started a conversation. So, cuz uh, I was in a Star Trek outfit. Cuz you were in a Star Trek outfit. <laughs> and we weren't when we weren't working together yeah. at the coffee bean and tea leaf. I was the weird person that came up <laughs> and bothered the customer. <laughs> that was me. I was okay with that. So that does work. <laughs> so that does work sometimes. So, uh 
So then you did those for a while, and then what made you want to do shorts? Uh, very much the same thing of trying to do trying to do uh, stage. I wanted something that I that actually had some sustainability longevity. Right. I could take it to a film festival, right. and so I sat down. I had this idea about a French parody, French film parody, and a guy falls in love with a blow up love doll, and that was before. What was the what oh was the Lars and the Real Girl? Lars and the Real yeah, Girl. I did it like seven that. years before that. Yeah. So is the goal at this point still okay? I still want to be an actor. I need to be seen in other ways. Or now are you falling in love with writing a little bit, a little bit of acting? You're you're broadening the goal. Um, I'm looking up there, and they had a little shot of it. Um, <laughs> so okay. it was it was still at that point. It was it was acting, um, but ironically, the film did very well. Um, yeah, qualified for an Academy Award nomination, got picked up at HBO, Showtime. So and you wrote it. I wrote it, and I started. And you started it. And so um, as as people started seeing it, they you know interested me as an actor but really they were like what else have you written right writing into so so walk us through that you're you're doing your full-time job mm -hmm. so this is what people say to me they say well I got a full-time job I don't have time to do that well how do you work around that well you know you do you any any other side gig that you would do I mean your uber or whatever if you were doing another yeah. side gig it becomes another job that you're doing uh, for that I approached uh, some producers as I knew and a director and I had the script and they love the script and then we shot it on the weekend we shot it in two days right I mean that's the other thing guys uh, what you don't understand evenings and weekends are your best friends when you are creating content you can you can meet with your friends you can spitball the ideas and so many shorts that I've ever done have always shot on Saturday and Sunday mm -hmm. on the weekends when people are you know a hundred percent available what do you mean that it qualified for an Academy Award um, in order for a short film to uh, be considered for an Academy Award you have to win one of the I don't know how many it is right now 30 film festivals but you have to win the best of the fest and then those films qualify for an Academy Award nomination and out of those they pick the five to ten that actually get nominated so you won best film at it that short at a at a, one at of a those yes. yeah festivals. Academy Award yeah. yeah was that something that was a goal of yours like did you go into this thing okay I want to be recognized as a writer I know I'm harping on the goals but I'm thinking about no, the people that, out there right now if you're like I want to be recognized as an actor so I know I need to write this specifically in the format so that it can win best short at one of these three festivals yeah when I started out it's it's much easier now because now everything's online and you can just go right to like without a box which is a forum so it's you a can really good one to to submit and film freeway where you submit to film festivals but um, after I saw what we had I knew that it was going to be something that was good and it might have a shot so you you did it without thinking I'm gonna try to qualify for these things. no not when I first did it it was okay. I want to show myself as an actor and you know and I want to create something kind of fun and funny that cool. might get people's attention yeah but then after it started getting some traction I realized okay we could we got a shot at something here and it yeah. ended up and like I said it won the Showtime Latino Filmmaker Showcase it got picked up by HBO but for those of you for those people that don't know that short films have a duration of about two years um, on the festival circuit. In the festival circuit. What do you right. mean a duration of two years? You can, meaning, you know, you you can submit you can submit your film to some film festivals. A lot of people get discouraged, but you can actually, if you have a film that's successful, it will keep going around to film festivals for, because a lot of them will, will after after a film is after two years old, say, they'll say, we won't accept a film that's that old. So you can be submitting and going and meeting people for about two years. From Obviously, the date that you finish from the date that the first festival you were in from it's loosey-goosey but it's really it's from it's from uh, the first festival probably right? it's no it's from the the completion the completion, completion date of the film okay <laughs> they and don't that's know. usually very and you can fudge that a little bit. how are they going to know whether you finished it in january or finished it in, yeah yeah <laughs> right <laughs> yeah i did an insert of my thumb it's brand new <laughs> it was very important though yeah actually yeah. with my film now that's exactly yeah, because it's it's a it's a few years old, but yeah, I had yeah, to do yeah. I had to do uh, color corrects and sound. 
So I went, it's a brand new film. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it never went to film festivals. So, I mean, it wasn't like I was trying to pull anything over on anybody. Right. So, okay, so here, here's the nuts and bolts. So Jason and Talay are going to be talking about, you know, Indiegogo fundraising and things like that for their projects because they do features. So this is the thing. The edict that we all hear 100% of the time is don't use your own money to put on, uh, to, to make a film. Now, I agree with that with feature filmmaking, but tell us about how you finance this stuff for yourself. I think. Or by yourself. The very first film I did, it was financed by the director. That's okay. very rare. And you pitched it to the director, and he financed it. Mm-hmm. He wanted something to. He wanted something to direct and for his reel. For his reel. Did you go to him knowing he had money to direct it? No, I went to some producers who had who had produced some comedy live comedy shows that I had done, and I gave it to them, and they said, "Hey, well, you know, Dan, he wants to direct something, and Dan, I knew and I liked, and." Um, they said and he'll put in money. Now back then we shot on film, which meant that the film cost about sixteen thousand dollars. Wow, that's how wow. Back in the day, back that's in the a, day. Yeah. Now those those times are gone, though. You know, yeah. it's it's you can shoot things on an iPhone. I shot this la- the last film that I just mentioned that I did color correct on. I think I spent five hundred dollars on it. Wow, and it looks gorgeous. But I also pulled favors from people. I pulled my you know, favors from people you have probably done favors for. People that I've done favors for. Or people willing just, to help. Well, I'll tell you an interesting story about uh, the film that Sean and I did, which was Psyche. Um, I put, I was looking for a film composer, and I put an ad of all place on Craigslist. And I got contacted by a guy who was an Emmy Award nominated uh, composer who had worked on Mary Tyler Moore, MASH, uh, wow. uh, Rhoda, all of those big, and I saw Rhoda. And I he, know. <coughs> yeah. I know. He, uh, but he, he was willing to do it for free, to give me all this music for free just because he felt like he was aging out of the market and he needed to be attached to something young and fresh and hip. So he gave all the music for yeah. free. Interesting. Yeah, you can find people who want to work and be a part of something because there's it's kind of like a bartering system if uh, I don't you know it works in in other things I know guys contractors will say hey I'll do this for your house if you give my kid guitar lessons it's you know that does happen and a lot of times people just need footage as a director as a composer right. as an actor so they're willing to come and do that if you're an actor and you need to uh, build your reel Please don't get snobby about doing shorts. I still do free shorts. I literally done one, did one last month for a friend of mine that I know has. Uh, we've been friends, and he's a creative guy, and he had an acting. Uh, directing class at UCLA. He put something out there on Facebook. I said, hey, is there a part for me? He said, yes. And then I said, yeah, I felt, I said to him, I said, gosh, I wish he would have just reached out directly. He goes, I was, but I felt like that would be obnoxious. So I put it on Facebook hoping you'd see it. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, okay, from now on, stop yes, doing yeah, that. Yeah. Because I just loved the thing. And, and that's the other thing. He did it on an iPhone and he shot it for four hours on a Friday night. And you can do that these days. Right. You can be quick. So that doesn't bother me. I do shorts all the time for people. When people say, hey, will you do my shorts? It's five days with travel, no pay. Well, that's I can't afford to do that. But if you can make it easy for everybody, people be willing to you know, do the project. So that's what we mean by favors, like calling in your favors. And so after that guy financed that one, I know that, didn't you personally finance I, Psyche and... Every, yeah, all those other ones I I financed myself. And you, it's a, it, it is a money commitment, but like I said, little. that's why I try and use as many people that I know. Um, yeah. a- actors don't usually charge. Right. Um, camera people, don't always charge if they if like Sean said if they want if they want to be attached to a really cool project right um, so the question initially was you know for features that you people should yeah. not pay for their own features right but for shorts it seems like it's okay to pay for your own uh, short and what price range is it okay up until and what do you guys think are the best ways to fund that by getting a side job by taking money from a pre- previous project a I w- lot of questions. Okay, I'm, I, I think I got an answer for that. If if you're just starting out, and this is what I would say to anybody just starting out, 
start with something simple that isn't going to cost you a lot of money. Don't get overly ambitious on your first short film unless you know that you have a script that maybe you submitted and it won a big award. So under $1,000. Oh, yeah. Or, le- or less. You know, yeah. there, there's, there's, things on, there's things online that you can tell these people just shot in their living room, but it's just kind of funny and quirky and weird, and they edit it themselves, and maybe the editing doesn't look amazing, but you see what the content is. Right. And and I know that, uh, so Doug, when he was doing the reality stuff, he, he told me, he said, okay, that's fulfilling one thing, and it's fun, um, but it wasn't getting as creative as he liked. And for a while there, you were doing like one short a year to every year and a half, and then he would get invited to all these festivals where he gets to travel and meet a lot of really great people and other actors and... You know, it wasn't like, oh, this is going to be a TV show. It was always just appreciating that I'm being creative. I'm putting something out there. I get to put it in a film festival where there's an audience who reacts to it, who you get to talk to. I mean, it's like putting up a play, guys. You know, a lot of not everybody in the world is going to see it, but that lobby after you're done is so nice, and that's what film festivals are like. Tell us about your film festival experience. You've loved it. I, mean, I, I do love I do love film festivals because you do you get appreciated for your work as an artist, right? They don't care whether you you're when, hot when or, you yeah or when you fly back home you're going to go back and you're going to go to your waiting job you're not a waiter then you are a filmmaker right. you're an actor you're a director and the good film festivals will treat you that way you know but there's something also important i think especially for your audience that m- may not know as much about this but there are actual uh departments in a lot of agencies that are going online looking at people who are creating content okay they are looking for that hot viral video Right. Um, right. I personally got my very first writing job off of the first short film that I did, and it. And here's how quickly it happened. Um, somebody saw it. They called me in. They were desperate for a writer for a show on E Entertainment. I had never written for a TV show. All I had was a short film. They gave me a writing test, they liked what I did, and they hired me. So I'm one of those people that literally went from one day I was a waiter to the next day I was a professional writer. I mean, right. that's how quickly it happened. And this is what I think I keep trying to tell people and what I'll discuss with my actor, Lassa's agent. You create your own opportunities. There's just an energy, and I truly believe this. When you're doing stuff, you said something the other day when we talked about this show. You said it's just always good to say. Like if you say, hey, what are you up to? And you go, oh, I'm going to classes and uh, learn, you know, I'm going to classes and learning to be a good actor. Okay. But, you know, Doug would say, well, I'm in the show. Uh, I've got the sketch show that I put up. I'm uh, producing my own show. I just finished, you know, I'm color correcting my short. I mean, it shows proactivity. It shows that you're doing your 90% as opposed to the 10%. Everybody thinks that 10% is the savior. It's mm-hmm. the gatekeeper. It's the one that will say, are you successful or not? It's you got to flip that script. It's the 90% that you put in that is way more important than the agent's 10%. And they get more excited. I have a student of mine who is, she's just a fabulous writer, so good, so funny. She keeps bringing in stuff. Never ask me about an agent. And I want to bring one of my agents to our sketch show because I just think, I was like, man, she should be on Saturday Night Live in my eyes. So I think... You know, that kind of proactivity is attractive to people. They don't want you to, you know, be pulling on their coat sleeve going, why aren't I working? You know, that <laughs> right. they're only 10%. You're the 90%. But I think it's also important just for an actor's sanity, you know, to because you can fall into that pit of, you know, I'm just, I want to be an actor, but I'm not doing anything. And, yeah. and you can always be doing stuff. You can always be doing a play. You There's can always so many be things. Yeah. writing a script. And that way, like you said, if somebody does run into you and says, what are you What are you doing? Well, here's what I'm doing. Yeah, and this is why I plug Playhouse West. Again, they have film festivals every year. They have uh, 48-hour film festivals. Um, they have uh, one-act play festivals. A good acting school should have outlets for you, and that's really great. You, you, it, it, I just think it takes you take the work and then apply it, and I really appreciate that. I know other schools do that, but I'm just saying I think it's one of the strong suits of Playhouse West as well. Yeah. Um, and so with so those are the reasons why we do our improv shows or sketch shows or our shorts. So let's get to the other side. Let's start talking about 
How do I get inspired? Now, I got to nail quickly, Doug. Sean, I'm going to hop in. Please do. Uh, as you guys were talking about smartly using locations that you have and shooting inside areas you know you can shoot, I quickly pulled up a short that Roxy's in from her channel called, I won't say the name on air because it has a little bit of a curse in it, but it's called <laughs> Crazy B-I-T-C-H. Really, really wonderful short that Roxy's in that yeah, she filmed okay. with her friend Sarah. Female Very directed, fun. female written. Really great short. It looks great, color corrected, and it's a great example of shot on a shoestring that you guys made. So. Yeah, we shot it in a day. Uh, my One of the girls' has, parents has a really nice house in, uh, yeah. farther out in Westlake, so we went there and shot for the day. Uh, there was a crew of like 15 people all there for free. They just wanted to be there to help because yeah. this director's done a lot of different favors for people also through the years. And it was a really great experience, but that when you're talking about inspiration for, because we are going to talk about how do you come up with these ideas, location is a really great start for inspiration. Mm -hmm. If you think about what you have at your resources, at your disposal, that is free for you. Mm -hmm. And then what could you do there? Whether that is a parent's house, an apartment, a backyard, a yeah. uh, spooky yeah hills a pool a whatever you have that you know nobody's going to charge me for this or yeah. a bar or right. whatever uh um, yep. i think that that's a great place to start trying to figure out okay what can we do yeah what do i have to work with it's yeah. really good uh, i i kind of gave doug a hard time because i realized wow a lot of Doug's <laughs> inspirations come from things that annoy him. <laughs> That's so very true. His French film came from, uh, it's a great story, uh, Doug and I, we heard this great thing about uh, this, or heard about a French film. I heard that there was a lot of uh, beautiful lovemaking, and I was a sad 20-something-year-old, and I said, oh, let's go see that. <laughs> and, uh, uh, I, I'm going to be honest with every my listeners. I'm sorry. <laughs> you you got know, it. The Beatles said they got into it to meet girls, right? <laughs> and, so, and it worked. And it worked. There so, was lots and lots of... <laughs> Yeah. Love making. Yeah. <laughs> but it was, it was, I was like, oh, gosh, this is a little pretentious and annoying. What was the movie? Do you remember? Betty Blue. <laughs> it's called yes, Betty Blue. Okay. And, and, and people do love it. And maybe and we you know should what? watch yeah, it again maybe because we, we were should. only we were, 18 yeah, or 19. Yeah, we were. <laughs> but Doug was so annoyed with the pretension <laughs> and how long it went and how self involved everyone was. That, and that's what inspired his French film. I highly recommend it. It's called La Balloon. You can find it on uh, YouTube. It's it's hysterical. It's really, really funny. So what, um, you put it up on YouTube after it had run? Yeah. After it had done its, <clears throat> after it's done its course, yeah. Because that's and for anybody who's interested. If you are going to plan on putting something into film festivals, don't put it online. You yes. will disqualify yourself from film festivals. And then after it was done, you wanted as many eyes to see it as possible, so you put it on Actually, YouTube. the producers put it up. Oh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, but then, page. and but then you can search for it and find it. And then, uh, and then your other one that you just got in there was the long lines at a bathroom, right? Wasn't it? The yeah. People that go into bathrooms, uh, and it just goes to that unreasonable amount of time. Like, you're, what are you doing in there? That you're in there for so long. So he wrote a short called Squatters' Rights about like a, a hillbilly family that has set up their whole home in a bathroom, and no, <laughs> no one can get in. <laughs> That's great, <laughs> and uh, and that's running the festival circuit now. Yeah, that's uh, we yeah. Uh, did the LA Shorts Fest and just uh, got back from San Antonio a couple weeks ago. That's awesome. So congratulations! Listen, Thank and you. so so that's what sparked Doug for a lot of fun things. What other ways do we find that can spark us? Well, you know, I liked what Roxy was saying about the location because, um, interestingly enough, in the screenwriting class that I teach, one of the exercises is to go to a location. Go to any location and just sit there and just let your mind sort of be free. Don't have that feeling of like, I got to come up with something to write. Right. Just sort of just see what the vibe is you're getting from it. Maybe it's going to remind you of your grandma's house, and then grandma reminds me of cookies, and those cookies remind me of going into elementary school and that fight I got into with a little kid, and suddenly you're writing a whole other story that didn't maybe wasn't even tied to that particular location. Right. Um, uh, obviously, things that annoy you. <laughs> things, things that annoy But I would say also be be listening to the things that do touch you, whether right. that's annoying you, or, you make know, you laugh, make you laugh. Music. Why do? What another exercise I do is listen to a piece of music. See what it see what it does for you. See if you can write a scene that you can sort of capture the tone of the of the piece, and see if you write something that sounds like this. 
What inspired yours? My what? Yeah, the short you did. Uh, oh, <laughs> my, uh-huh. what? my what? Well, because you've read my pilot now and all. Oh, right, 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 right. Um, um, that well, I was an actress in that, so she wrote it. Uh, the director wrote it, and oh, okay. the premise is it's basically like a horror comedy. So, roommate comes and wakes me up, says that there's a crazy bitch under her bed. When I finally get there, we're all scared. I look, it's a mirror, and she's talking about me. I'm the crazy <laughs> bitch. It's a funny short little thing. Um, that and is very funny. She was she was inspired by the way my best friend, who's an actress, she's in it as well, and I were talking to each other, just like no. I, I think we were just giving each other crap one day. Like, no, right. you're the psychopath. No, you're a psychopath. And <laughs> right. whatever, back and forth. And she was like, ooh, they're both psychopaths. I can yeah. do this. Um, yeah. So she was literally like, just kind of ping-ponging back a conversation between yeah. us. And she loves horror, so she threw in that element. Um, and I think also she knew the location. She knew we had this beautiful house to work with. Yeah. And that was really helpful. For me, I feel like I, I'm totally a fan of Write What You Know. Yeah. So I think about what do I have that I can share with people that they don't know about, not in a pretentious way, but in like a, I've had a lot of crazy things happen in my life, and sometimes I tell stories that get bigger reactions, and I'm like, what are the stories that have made people really widen their eyes? Like, what that happened to you? Oh my yeah. god, I can't believe it made them emote in some way, and then taking that not being precious about my personal story, but using that to write a new story for somebody that shares similar tones. Yeah, yeah. 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 Some of your funny stories. Um, I think uh, that I, you also just keep your ears open. And with that with that artist's mind, uh, Gabe and I had a funny idea because we heard a guy at 7-Eleven. This guy uh, was trying to give change with the drawer stuck. So this guy had to do a little banter while he was waiting for the door to open. He's like, yep, money. And he goes, yeah. And the other guy goes, yeah, money. Got to get a job to have money. And the other guy was <laughs> like, work all day and get that cash. Use that cash to buy that food. Money is the way to go. You don't have money, you don't have food. They were just trying to <laughs> just, just trying to oh, fill yeah. the time. So, you know, Gabe and I took that and we were, you know, just write it for our hopeful sketch show someday. But, but you know, just going, that cheddar. Not the cheese, the cheddar's the money. The money's like, <laughs> spread that cheese on bread. Bread is also money. Like, what would happen? But what's so funny, as soon as that drawer opened, the guy took off. They're like, okay. And they were so glad that they, they were so glad that their forced banter had to end, you know? Any kind of situation that you're stuck in is a really good way to start something, too. Yeah. Uh-huh. Like, like, there, you're stuck. He can't open that. You can't pay until the yeah, you're yeah. stuck in that situation. Or elevator, you're stuck. Yeah. Locked yeah. room, you are stuck. Whatever, if you can make your characters in a short be stuck. Yeah, somewhere. That's fun, too. Have stories from your childhood, things that inspire you. I told you, remember, remember that story about the short? Because I loved, uh, we had their location. We had a little bar in my underneath my uh, house. My stepfather had a little bar, and we used that. And it was like that Twilight Zone where... He stays in this place and says, oh, please don't let me leave this place. He wishes during World War II. And then when the bombs start to go off, he actually can't leave because when they said this place, it meant the actual <laughs> bar. So he dies in the, as the bar explodes. And I was a huge fan of Twilight Zone. You know, a lot of people do that, too. Oh, I'm a fan of, you know, uh, Jordan Peele said, because I mentioned this about people under the stairs, but he said people under the stairs and Rosemary's Baby, those two things inspired him. You know, things. You pay homage to them. Yeah, mm-hmm. pay homage sure. to them through a different type and uh, different situations. I know, like Fleabag is about you know, kind of loosely about her life. That was a one-woman show, and then that turned into a series. Mm-hmm. So, um, and to quickly jump, Sean, too. I think I love what you say about write what you love. Uh, most artists, as Roxy said, the way they start is just copying who they love. I'm, comics talk about going on stage, just almost doing something so similar to a comedian they love and grew up with. If you're a new writer, start with characters you already know and write a scene with them. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and obviously you won't shoot that, but it's a great way to start writing dialogue. One of my favorite movies, and I know it hasn't aged super well, but American Beauty, that scene of them at the dinner table is so incredible. And like, just try to rewrite another dinner table scene with those people and see what happens. Maybe you'll think of something original. I agree with that about characters and then also, in the same way we talked about locations you know, also the people you know. So, if you have really interesting looking actor friends and you're like, okay, right. I'm writing for this person and maybe that person is 
really short, really chubby, has right. an interesting mole on them, whatever. Think about who they are. Try to write for that character. And where would it be fun to where see would be that fun person? To see them. Right. So think about what's at your disposal, whether that is location or the actual actors, or I don't necessarily recommend babies or animals, but like whatever other mm -hmm. things or machinery, whatever you have that you could make into something. Start yeah, so you have. you have so many different ideas. Like I said, I do a mm -hmm. sketch thing where I say, I want you to come in and I want you to do. Uh, we have a sketch in our show right now that was literally just an exercise called Hello, I'm a. And they said, an English is a second language teacher. That was it. And this woman went off and she said a couple things that we thought were really funny in the improv. Then she did the writing assignment. Then we thought oh, it would be better with two people. And that's one of the highlights of my show right now. Really? Yeah, so you there's tons that's of great. different ways. So now we have the idea. Well, let's say we have an idea how how do we flesh that out into storytelling Doug teaches screenwriting so and and production class where he does scenes so walk mm -hmm. us through like the basics of someone doesn't really know how to flesh out a story well once you once you kind of know what your story is um, I mean I always say that r r telling a story is the same as telling a story on the page is the same as telling a story to a group of people like the same like if I were to tell you like oh god okay so when I was in third grade me and my best friend were out on the playground suddenly the big bully came over. Well, basically all I'm doing is what is general storytelling, which is establishing the world that you live in. Okay. Who are you? Where are you? Why is today so important? Then right. you move on to, okay, so what's the conflict? So I've got these, like, like Roxy's saying, let's say we got these two great characters. Now, what situation can we put them in where they're going to have to make some choices? They're yeah, be you in... could say one, one, the goofy guy, the goofy looking friend is, is an obnoxious waiter, and the other person, someone who's really hungry. Mm -hmm. And one really good, one really good exercise actually that I do in screenwriting class and in the uh, one act class is I make them write a breakup scene. Um, and the breakup scene doesn't have to be a romantic breakup scene. Like I tell them to get kind of creative with it. Like it could be breaking up with some. A guy just wrote one that's actually in our show. A guy breaking up with cigarettes. And yeah. a girl comes out and she's dressed up like cigarettes and they have this banter. And it's a <laughs> it's a really good exercise because automatically everybody has a strong point of view and there's a conflict. The conflict is I don't want to be with you anymore and the other person wants to convince them why it's important that they stay together. And that's it. That's a conflict. Uh huh. Yeah. That's a good way to start it. It's a fun, yeah. It's a, it's it's a fun thing to do, and you can get super. I mean, some uh, uh, one of the students who's also one of Sean's students wrote one where Popeye is breaking up with spinach because he discovered steroids. <laughs> <laughs> so, so do we have to have a conflict in every story? Yes. Okay. <laughs> and what in the explain okay. different types of conflict. Okay. Well, I, well, I want to say the reason why why it's important to have conflict. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have a okay, I've, I've got this great idea for a movie. So this girl, she wants to fall in love, and she meets this guy, and they meet and they fall in love. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice story for your grandma to tell you about how right. she met grandpa, right. but you don't want to go see that movie. That's you know? why we have them, the son and the daughter of two rival families who hate each other. Right. That's the conflict. We I don't all... know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> West Lake Story. That yeah. was a short I did. <laughs> <That's a> short. <laughs> um, no, so, so look, like all of us all of us are hungry to see people overcome, uh, overcome an, an obstacle. That's why you have to have a conflict, whatever that conflict is. And then can they be internal conflicts? They can be internal conflicts. So what do we call these movies that are a slice of life? coming of age um, you know they don't seem to have uh, that much of a but conflict but, but then you when you examine them they but, kind of all do huh look I mean conflict conflict doesn't necessarily have to be like a fight or a life or death you know mm -hmm. you can have a short film and it opens up and it's a guy and a girl obviously on a first date and they're both really nervous and they're kind of struggling through the dinner even though there might be a connection between the two of them well there's a very strong conflict there their nerves their nerves that the nerves what is that the conflict in the that? conflict well the definition definition of conflict is an opposing but equally strong force that stands in the way of a character getting what they want and that okay. forces them to take action um, 
So no, if, if I'm getting to but, it. <laughs> no, 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 no. So my question would be, the conflict, is the nerves, isn't that just the setup? No, that's the conflict. Okay. What the character wants, what the character wants, let's say Roxy and I are out on a date, and what I want is for her to like me back. And maybe she wants me to like her back. But what's standing in the way is, is the nerves. nerves, is the fear that I'm going to say something stupid, is the fear that she's going to realize that I remind her of her ex-boyfriend and she's not going to be interested in me. Right. That's what, And that causes us to do that causes me to be on my best behavior or it may cause me to try and crack a joke to the waiter and then realize oh god that was a really stupid joke you know right there's conflict but i like that i like what you said that it doesn't have to be hugely dramatic or a big fight or anything like that there no. are subtle conflicts that we all go through trying to get into the bathroom waiting in line for the bathroom that's what started yours that, that's what started my last short film a guy needs to get into the bathroom and there's somebody who won't come out Right. And then you find out that, and the conflict is the place where I'm supposed to go to the bathroom easily and publicly is people living in there. Now, now there is a family of hillbillies living in the bathroom <laughs> and I can't get in. Right, right. And then, so talk to us about, the, okay, so we have the setup, then we have the conflict. Talk about resolution and a button. Okay. Um, <clears throat> In 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 short in short film writing, the basic the real loose is what is the conflict? How does the conflict play out? How what how do the how does it make the characters act? Then finally, there is the uh, the crescendo of the scene, which is like a peak, the kinda. peak of the scene, and that's usually when a, one of the characters gives in to the conflict. Okay, um, and uh, to so be in this in a given using your example what could be a resolution of the conflict you guys being nervous on your date okay what could be the what could be the, the peak the, the peak resolution. would be would be maybe we get into, she Roxy gets like a little bit annoyed with me and I finally confess I have not been on a date in three years and she goes Oh, neither have I. Can we just relax and enjoy each other's company and not pretend like we are on a date? Right. Okay. Then right. we have a resolution. Right. And right. we change. We change from or, where we started at the very beginning. Or another comedic way to do it is go, oh, you remind me of so-and-so from this video game. You play that? I love that video game. You know? That's yeah, exactly. We, yeah. You know, there's a, you know, I, I give this example of a guy going in perhaps to see his father on, you know, on his deathbed and he wants to talk to him and they, he's been estranged, estranged from him. Right. Um, so this could go where he confronts his father. The father says, I'm so sorry. I never meant to do that. It's just my relationship with my father. They come together and everything's resolved. Or it could be the father says, I never, you're a whiner, I never liked you, I never wanted to have kids, and I don't care about you. And the guy has to leave and walks out saying, that's really hurtful, but I'm going to be a better father to my kids. So That's right. two different endings. And right. what you're trying to say as the writer. What are you trying to say as the writer? Right. Some things we can accept, some things you can change, some, you know, how do you move forward? A few right. more nuts and bolts on this, because I am curious, uh, if somebody is a first-timer, they're mm -hmm. making their first short film, do you do you recommend a specific length? Do you? Oh, that's a very good question. Because the the longer, sometimes the more expensive. Yes, <clears throat> I in 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 the class I teach, I tell them under ten minutes. But if you can get a short film, five seven minutes, even better. Right. You, UA, you run a, a much better chance of getting into into the film festivals. The shorter the shorter because the look, they can take they can take one twenty minute short or they can take four or five minute shorts. They're going to try and put in as many films as they can. Also, a lot of times. Especially with beginning writers, when a film starts getting over 10 minutes, it usually means they're not really clear about what they're trying to say. So if they can say it in 10 minutes, it keeps them sort of on track of making sure that their story isn't veering off and putting in too many elements that it doesn't need. Because really short films should be very simple. That's why I loved you know, the premise of the one you just talked about. I mean, it's such an understandable premise, and then it's got that great button at the end. And so you just used the word I wanted to explore next, a button. 
Uh, now, is button just for comedy, or can it be for drama too? No, it can be. It can be for drama too. Um, How would you define button for people well, who wouldn't know what a button is? Well, in comedy, in comedy, we call them buttons. Right. Um, if you're not doing comedy in 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 a short form uh, right. context, you would say an unexpected ending. Okay. Okay. The ending that you're the mirror under the bed is the unexpected ending. Right. Right. Like you, you keeps the audience on the edge of their seat. Like, well, it's what is going to be under there? Is it going to be Phyllis Diller? Is it going to be a <laughs> yeah, monster? Yeah. What is it going to be? Right. Um, and really, it's just it's just that ending that wraps the whole thing up. And hopefully, if it's something a little bit unexpected, great. Listen, I think this stuff is all very useful. But for people, listen, who are also doing this, and as I say, getting into acting i have you read uh watch read plays watch movies watch shorts guys if you're gonna do comedy watch a bunch of sketch shows watch monty python watch um uh, key and peel watch saturday night live what is the best way to watch shorts or to find shorts to watch? i would say youtube right well there's actually and i hope i'm not getting this right but because i it, just as you were saying i thought of it i think it is called Everyday short or today shorts, and they actually have it's a website. Yeah, uh-huh. it's an online, and you can watch you can watch uh, short films. Well, you should. Uh, Is that short of the week? Short of the week. That yeah, thank I'll you. I'll pull it up here. Yes, yeah, thank, thank you. you. Um, yeah, because it is great to see and and look at the ones that are getting into film festivals, the ones that are winning awards. That that's a good barometer of kind of what you should yeah be what aiming they're for. doing. Yeah, because YouTube's a pretty big place. I don't know if you would just type in like right, fast, right. top shorts or but this, that's yeah. really good short of the week. That yeah, it's really really good. And I will say for comedy fans, SNL does digital shorts now, and they are so well made, so concisely written. That's, yes, in my mind, that's the best thing that show is doing right now. Super easy to find on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, the digital. Same on. cast, Jeff? Uh, same cast yeah, as... Yeah, same cast. As SNL. As, as the live show. Yeah, as the live show. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And then they fill it out if they need to. But that's a way also, guys, to study. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Fontavious, since you're a writer here, any question that you had or thought for Doug, what he talked about? I don't think so. I mean, I think, like, you can think of a great short as really it's one really well-written scene. And, you know, a scene should never be longer than, like you said, five or six pages. And that's why I think great shorts are oftentimes five to seven minutes, just like you said. I think Mm -hmm. if you get too far in the weeds, it's no longer a short, is what I think. So... Yeah. I totally agree with everything Doug said. You're exa- yeah, you're exactly right. That is, let me say this. A short, if you start writing it, it is about one thing. Don't make it, try and make it into a feature film when you've got all different kinds of storylines. It is about that one thing. Right. So, uh, quickly, my story from the set example this week is Doug, years ago, was annoyed with a therapy session that went south, <laughs> and, and he wrote uh, Psyche on Melrose. It was a sketch about the hottest restaurant in Hollywood, where all the waiters were trained therapists, and this therapist basically abuses a family, <laughs> uh, just analyzing everything they do and say, and putting, you know, psych- Psycho babble and projecting on them did very very well. Uh, it, I mean, I saw it many times. Years later, Doug, when Doug's moved into his shorts, you know, uh, time of his life when he's doing a lot of shorts, he did it as a short. It was twelve years after you wrote it, yeah, right? Yeah, it was a number of years. And after. he asked me to do the part, which I said absolutely not because I've seen you do it so many times. It's so in your voice. I don't want to try to do you. And he said, listen. You know, uh, I think you could do it great. And then he said, listen, your face will help me because you're a little more known. And I know you can do it. And I was, I've never been more scared to do something because uh, it was not, it was one of my favorite pieces that Doug ever wrote. And I loved Doug in the role. So he helped me find it and directed it. And we did Psyche on uh, Melrose as a short. Short film. As a short film. And that did the film festival circuit, did really well. And then eight years later, uh, he had told students about it. And it was that Vinny? Vinny had been. Had, he, this is one of our co producers. And, and they saw a restaurant. And we said, oh, that'd be really fun to expand this into a play. And we, it, was psych- it was on uh, three clubs on Vine. Street and it had a it was a show that we could do in a restaurant so it felt immersive and 
Doug said, hey, will you write it with me? And we'd never written together ever, but we'd been such good friends for so long. It was so easy. It was really so easy. easy for us. We had a That's great cool. time writing. We did really well. And uh, it ran for nine, nine. months. Nine months and Roxy, that's how. And I liked it, and I don't have to say that. I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we it had was a great. We had a excellent. Great night when I met Kevin really Undergaro. Fun. He just said, you guys I are... just love that premise. Just yeah. the premise of psychiatrists as waiters. And was we talked great. a little bit on the show about how you guys are not done with it yet. No, just, no. We're so still we. Still moving forward. We, we can't. It. I don't know what, what yeah. I'm allowed to say. I was what very I'm vague not with allowed my to say. All I think what we can say is we. We are in discussions developing it as a show with a yeah. production company. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. As a television show. Right? As a television yeah. show. Yeah, as a television show uh, because this person came and saw the play. So Again, putting putting your own work Putting out your there. own work out there. They never would have thought of this idea in a million years. What were you going to say? Well, going back to what you said, Sean, you have to be able to be seen. Yeah, so put yourself out there. Be seen. You didn't just pitch it to them. You didn't go into the pitch meeting like, okay, so we have this idea. No. But no, they came, they saw the show. There was a short. There's been all these things. So the takeaway here is the 90% is you. And and you need to make that 10% excited and motivated to work for you. And, you know, you. this is a religious statement, but I do believe it's true. The universe or God helps those who help themselves. You know, whatever your religious beliefs are. But I truly believe that is just true. Hollywood helps those who help themselves. Yeah. <laughs> Which is absolutely true. Uh, and so if you help yourself, put yourself out there, define what you want to do, people come to you. I've said this a million times about Rachel Bloom, crazy ex-girlfriend. No one was looking for her. Who was the guy that just won uh, for the Versace um, oh, um, uh, from Glee, Darren, Darren Chris. Chris. Darren, Darren Chris. Chris. He did Harry Potter the Musical on YouTube. That's how he became famous. Then got on Glee. Then did Broadway. You know, uh, you put yourself. Oh, I loved him in Hedwig. So great. So put yourself out there, and that's really great. And then we'll talk about nuts and bolts for features. But uh, thank you, Doug, for coming thank you. and and helping us out. Where can people find you um, on social media? Uh, <laughs> Unless you don't want them to. No, no you're just not going to find me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I probably should have an online presence, but I don't. Well, probably. you can find him at but Playhouse, you can Playhouse West. West Playhouse sure. com. You can find me. You can also sign Take up for his screenwriting cl- class. Yeah. Oh, watch his shorts. For his production class. Yeah, watch his shorts. are really good. You can look them up on YouTube. Roxy? Everywhere at Roxy Stryer. Mr. Fantabulous? Everywhere at Jeffrey C. Graham. And you can find me on Facebook at Sean Whalen P. And at that guy SMW on Instagram and Twitter. As always, thank you for letting me be part of your journey. Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.